In Creo Parametric, the Options Modeler module supports a configure to order manufacturing strategy. What we mean by that is that you can set up a special kind of assembly called a configurable product that contains configurable modules, and then you can also have different options and choices. For example, we have options for fuel, and the choices are large and small. We have a headlights option, choices are yes and no. We have a power option with two different configurations, and we have two different sizes and two different styles. So we have five different options here, each with two different choices. If we were to set up all these different permutations using a family table, this would end up with 32 different variations. The more options and more choices that you have, the bigger your family table would be. But again, we want to allow someone to make their choices at the time they want to purchase something. So rather than predefining all the different variations, we are using the options modeler to do that. Let's take a look at how we would actually build the variations. We do that with something called the variance builder. Let's click on the icon in the ribbon. This will open up a dialog box that has three main areas. First, here we have the options list. You can see our list of options. If we go to the little settings icon and choose to expand all, we can also see the choices associated with them. Here we also have the model tree. I'm gonna make the first column a little bit wider so you can see that we have our configurable modules as well as standard assemblies and standard parts that will appear in all the different variants. If you take a look to the left of the configurable modules, you can see that there is a little yellow warning sign next to them. This indicates that the appropriate choices have not been made in order to define the variant. And when you are looking at the model tree, you can also go to this drop down list if you want to show the different choices for options that are excluded as well as the ones that are included. And let's go to the third area. Here we have the model graphics. You can see the configurable module. And some of the components are appearing in a regularly shaded mode and others are transparent. The muffler, for example, appears with regular shading because it is a component that appears in every possible variant. But the ones that are transparent are ones for which a choice has not been made. So let's say that we want to go about building a variant. There are two different methods that you can choose. You can pick from the different options or you can pick out of the model tree. I like picking out of the options. That is what I am going to use. And so for the fuel, let's say I want to create a variant that has a large fuel tank and I do want to have headlights so I can ride at night and I want a lot of power. I want a long motorcycle and for the style, I'm going to keep this one to the road. So there I've made all my different choices available in here. Next step. Oh yeah, let me take a look at the graphics area over here. You can see that the graphics area is updated to reflect the different choices. The next step is that I can choose to either update representation, update assembly, create a product variant, or cancel out of here. The first choice, update representation, I almost never use this. The way that the choices would be reflected in the main graphics area is with a simplified representation if I choose update representation. This again will just update the graphics in the graphics area. It's not going to regenerate the model, so a bunch of the components could end up in the wrong location. Then you'll have to do stuff like reapply the current configuration and regenerate to get the positions to look right. Let me skip over that one for now. The next choice here is to update assembly. When I want to take a look at the outcome, I would typically use update assembly because that, that'll select the different choices and also regenerate the assembly. 
And I'll also show you create product variant to create a brand new assembly model. But let's go to update assembly. And it asked me, do I want to leave without saving changes to this particular variant specification? Up here in the upper left hand side, we have a list of different variant specifications. And a variant specification is a list of particular choices that you have made. Let's say that no, we don't want to leave without saving changes to the variant specification. If I go to the drop down list, someone has already configured a variant specification, a bunch of choices corresponding to a street racer. There's also another one for Rocky Road. And that's a way that you can set up a bunch of different choices that you want to go back to over and over again. Let's say I want to get back to this set of choices at some other point. Well, we can go to this drop down list and you could save this variant specification. And you could either save it out to a local file in your working directory, or you could save it here in the particular assembly. And I can choose, hey, let's save this out to a local file. And then you can just call it whatever you want. Let me call this configurable motorbike dash one. And it'll save it in a .vsp file. In my working directory, there is already another VSP file. And if you have another .vsp file, you can open those up later on. But let me choose to save it out to disk. If you also go to the drop down list from the new variant spec flyout, you're able to create a new variant specification, or you can read one in from file, read in one of those .vsp files. Oops, let me cancel out of there. And that way, I've accidentally saved the uh, variant specification that I just made. Here's the CNFG configuration 0001 that I can access later on in the assembly. But anyhow, let me show you again. I'm going to choose to update the assembly. Here we get this affected children dialog box. So when it wants to regenerate, it says, hey, how do you want to deal with the children of the configurable product? For some reason, you might want to exclude certain components from regenerating and rerouting and updating locations. I don't know why you would want to do that. I usually just always click OK out of the affected children dialog box. And, and oops, looks like I was using the wrong configuration. Let's go back to the variant builder. And whenever you close this, for some reason, it always goes back to everything being collapsed. Yeah, I was accidentally in the wrong configuration. Hey, let me go back to that configuration that I made with the various different choices. Now I will do update assembly. And yes, I'm going to leave without saving changes to it. Now we can click OK out of here. And we no longer see the overlapping of components. We no longer see a situation in which our model looks overloaded. We're just seeing the components reflecting our different choices. If you take a look in the lower left hand corner of the graphics area, here it tells us that the master rep has been modified. So again, when you are applying the different choices here within the configurable product, you're really just updating a simplified representation. Let's go back to the variant builder. And once again, let me expand all. And I'm going to use the options selection method. And let's choose this time we want to have a small fuel tank. And we want to have, let's see, let's do no headlights. Let's do the lower power setting. Let's do the short size. And we're going to use the off-road configuration. And there are no warning signs in the model tree indicating that everything is good. I can go to this drop down list and choose to save this as a variant specification. We could save it to the assembly. And so that way I have this as the new variant specification with that name. Or you could type in a new name and then save this variant specification. Okay, there it is saved into the assembly. If I choose update representation, there you can see all the components are not in the right locations because it just updated the simplified rep without 
regenerating and updating the positions. So then you would have to like reapply the current configuration, click OK out of here, then try regenerating. And there we go. Now all the components are flying back into the correct location. So again, that's why I typically do not use that update representation choice. I just update assembly so that I can regenerate and have the components show where they would be. Let's say that you are looking at this particular uh, configuration and you want to see all the different components. You can go to the view manager and here we have the simplified rep. You double click on the master rep. We can click the OK button. And here all the components are back displayed in the graphics area, but it's still using the current configuration for the location of the components. Let me close out of here. Let's see if we go to the variant builder. Let me choose one of the predefined configurations like the street racer. That should be one that shows everything sort of big let me expand all so yeah this one has the long size the larger engine and oh it looks like it doesn't have a fuel tank specified you can see that the fuel module still has a warning sign next to it let's make a choice for that let's use the small engine and it shows that the street racer has been modified we could save this variant spec to the assembly and now we choose update assembly Let's choose OK from the Affected Children dialog box. And then we regenerate. And there we go. So this is the other configuration uh, that we can choose from the Street Racer configuration. OK, next one up. Let's take a look at, at actually making a brand new assembly from this. So let me choose the Variant Builder. And let's expand all for the choices. I wish you could set this to just always be expanded. Let me see. Let's say I want one with the large fuel tank, no headlights. I want lots of power, short size. And let's go with the road configuration and no warning signs over here. And then I could choose to create a product variant. This will actually make a new assembly. Again, if you take a look at the model tree, you can see that we have different symbols for the components in here, indicating a configurable product, configurable module. Uh, we do have some standard parts, standard assemblies, but this is a configurable product. If I choose to create a product variant, do I want to leave without saving changes to that configuration? Yeah, let's do that. Now we get a dialog box that allows us to set up a new name for this. So for example, this is configurable motorbike and it's going to append underscore new on the end. Maybe I want to call this configuration A01. And then for other levels, I could specify that I want the other levels to also have the same name on the end and then click the OK button and this particular one well it looks like I chose some things that are incompatible in terms of this this is not good this is sort of the point of setting up your configurable modules is that you want things to be able to regenerate without uh, failing in here but here we have the different configurable module. Let's go about trying to make a different brand new assembly. Let's try the variant builder once more and let's expand everything over here. And let's choose large fuel tank. Let's go with no headlights. Let's go with the large power. Let's go with the long configuration and let's go with the road one like before and we choose to put in a new name and we'll call this the Roadhog. And save the variant spec to the assembly. Then we can choose to create the product assembly. Let me use RH as the suffix. 
and then click the OK button. Here, this one was a better configuration. I think part of the problem was that I chose to have a small frame and it caused other things to fail. But here we have this particular variant. And be aware, when I created this product variant, this doesn't actually save it out to disk. Don't forget to save this if you want to be able to retrieve this as its own separate assembly. And if you take a look in the model tree, we have all the regular symbols for assemblies and parts. We don't have any of those symbols indicating any configurable modules or any configurable products. Another thing to note in here is that sometimes when people create this product variant in its own separate window, then they go back and say, ah, you know what, for this particular configuration, I want to rename some of these parts and some of these different assemblies. You can also do file, save as, and then save a copy of the object in the active window. And I could call this motor bike. And then let's call this B01. And then click the OK button. And this will give you the assembly save a copy dialog box that allows you to configure new names for any of the components as you wish. And then if you configure the new names, you can choose save copy or save copy and open. Let me cancel out of here. And let's go back to the configurable product. So again, with the different configurable modules, in order to make the new variant, you can use the variant builder and you can make your different choices from the options selection. And then after you make your different choices, you can save out your variant specification or load in an existing variant specification, and then either update representation, update assembly, or create the product variant. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.